Hi, I'm Tim Gaffney and this is part five of my virtual book talk about old breweries in Miamisburg, Ohio. Miamisburg is where I live and it's one of several communities I researched for my book, Dayton Beer, A History of Brewing in the Miami Valley. We're here in the south end of Miamisburg's community park, but in the late 1800s, the Miami Valley Brewery stood here. Now, in part four, I told you about August Keene's revival of the brewery in 1885, his shootout with a safe-cracking gang in 1887, and the fire that closed the brewery again in 1889. Now I'll tell you the rest of the story. After the fire in 1889, the brewery apparently sat idle, possibly for three years. This 1892 Sanborn insurance map shows it as closed. But that was its comeback year. In October, the Secretary of State's office reported a new incorporation, the Miamisburg Brewing Company. Its president was Henry P. Deutscher. Deutscher bought the brewery property from the Keens and transferred it to his company. Deutscher had immigrated as a child with his parents from the Grand Duchy of Baden, what's now a state in southwestern Germany. They had settled in Butler County, just south of Trenton. He had grown up with interests in farming, as well as farm-related businesses in nearby Hamilton. Deutscher eventually moved into Hamilton, but he kept his farm with its distinctive Italianate house. Today, that house is on the National Register of Historic Places. In Hamilton, the H.P. Deutscher Manufacturing Company became known for its innovative farm implements. Deutscher also had interests in other businesses, including a malt house, also in Hamilton. The Miamisburg Bulletin's report on the 1889 fire mentioned that Keene had ordered malt from a supplier in Hamilton. That supplier may have been Deutscher's malt house. It could be that Deutscher was familiar with the brewery, and when Keene gave it up, Deutscher saw another business opportunity. However it happened, Deutscher also incorporated Miamisburg Star Bottling as a separate company. The 1896 Sanborn map shows the bottling works on the north side of the brewery. Deutscher stayed in Hamilton and delegated management of the brewery and the bottling works, but his hand in the brewery was evident in its subsequent development. Deutscher knew the age-old practice of brewing as well as the modern ways of industry. Under his leadership, Miamisburg Brewing brought one of the latest industrial innovations to the brewery, refrigeration. Refrigeration is critical to keeping beer fresh and cold, especially lager, which has to be fermented and stored in cold temperatures. Through the middle of the 19th century, refrigeration involved harvesting blocks of ice off of ponds, rivers, or lakes during the winter. This scene of ice cutting in New York shows how it looked in 1846. Some brewers had their own ice ponds, and some made temporary ones by flooding nearby farm fields in December. They stored the ice in large sheds called ice houses, insulating it with straw or sawdust. During the summer, the ice would slowly melt and that cold ice water would drain into the beer cellars below. This 1892 Sanborn map shows an ice house at the Miami Valley Brewery. But making and storing ice took a lot of labor and the ice wasn't sanitary. Refrigeration technology changed everything. Meat and other foods could be stored safely in any season. The refrigeration industry took off in the second half of the 19th century, and brewers were an important part of the market. A refrigeration plant could produce cold water, brine, or ice to chill fermenting tanks and cellars throughout the year. It was cheaper and cleaner than pond ice. This 1896 Sanborn map shows Miamisburg Brewing had replaced its ice house with a refrigeration plant of some kind. And in March of 1898, the industry journal Ice and Refrigeration Illustrated reported that Miamisburg Brewing was doubling its storage capacity and had ordered a new ice plant from the Frick Company in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. The new machine was one of Frick's smaller models, but it would turn out 20 tons of ice a day. Besides keeping beer cold, a big ice machine gave a brewer a new product to sell, ice for home ice boxes. By August 1899, Miamisburg Brewing ads in the Miamisburg News were promising absolutely pure artificial ice for sale. But the story of the Miamisburg Brewery is not just about ice, but fire as well. The blaze that shuttered the brewery in 1889 was just the beginning. On June 20, 1898, 
The Hamilton Daily Republican reported another fire, another early morning blaze that once again destroyed most of the upper floor of the brewery. Miamisburg Brewing seemed to take its second blaze in stride. As the brewery closed the 19th century with a new modern ice plant, it seemed poised for the future. But the worst was yet to come. The Miamisburg News described what happened. Shortly before noon on Tuesday, May 8, 1900, a train rumbled past the brewery, its locomotive belching smoke, ash, and possibly embers. Minutes later, a brewery worker spotted flames in the stable on the south side of the brewery. He shouted an alarm, but it was a windy day and the wind fanned the blaze. The paper reported in 10 minutes the stable was a solid mass of fire and the terrific wind quickly communicated the fire to the frame addition of the brewery building. Armed with only a hose and buckets, brewery workers fought the wind-whipped flames. It was perilous work. The paper reported that one worker, Bernard Whelan, was throwing water on the burning stable when the wind blew a sheet of flame right into his face, leaving him severely burned about the head and hands. The brewery stood just outside the village line, but Miamisburg's fire department turned out to help. Nobody died, and the firefighters prevented the bottling plant from burning, but five horses perished in the stable, and the brewery itself burned to the ground. What started the fire isn't known. The brewing company blamed the railroad and filed a lawsuit, but it was the end of the line for Miamisburg's brewery. By then, breweries were proliferating across the Miami Valley and national brands were coming in. Miamisburg saloons didn't have to go far for beer, and more than a century would pass before the Star City could once again claim its own hometown brews. The good news is that the growth of craft brewing in the last decade includes two new brew pubs in Miamisburg. Star City Brewing and Lucky Star Brewery and Cantina, both located just a block apart on South 2nd Street. I hope you've enjoyed my series about Miamisburg's old breweries. If you want to learn more, you can find my book locally at Barnes & Noble Booksellers and at Carroll on Historical Park in Dayton. You can also find it online at Amazon.com, either in print or as a Kindle ebook. Cheers!